Hey guys, Kayla here. Welcome back to my channel. So today I have a really exciting video to share with you. I got to chat with Jesse Ryman, uh, someone that I had worked with about a year and a half ago now. We had a Skype call together and she was just really awesome to talk to. And so recently we reconnected and she's come so far from the last time we spoke. Um, her story and testimony is so amazing. So I had to get her on the channel to share her story with you guys because I think that it could help a lot to maybe bring you some clarity, some hope, some inspiration, and all that jazz. Thank you, Jessie, for coming on the channel. I started out by asking Jessie to share her story. So without further ado, let's get into the interview. My name is Jessie Riemann. I never really had weight problems growing up. Um, but all it took kind of like right around 14 was for someone to say, oh, you could stand to lose a little bit of weight. And because I already kind of was always like a type A, um, kind of slightly obsessive kind of kid, I took that to mean, oh, so that means I really need to get serious with this. So I went on my first diet and started to exercise and it seemed kind of harmless at first, but you know with that more obsessive personality type. Oh, just, you know, the more you see progress, the more you want. Eventually turned into anorexia. And um, I just, you know, I was all obsessed with it. At that point, I had pushed everyone out of my life. I um, became kind of a shy, reclusive kind of person, which is not me naturally. Um, I, you know, started to have health problems, but nevertheless, like, this is all I knew. I didn't even think I had a problem at this point. And um, my weight just kept dropping and dropping. And, you know, I remember even my dad at this point was very, very concerned and had taken me to the doctor hoping that the doctor would say something. But because I'm five foot three, you know, the weight range for a five foot three girl can be pretty low. So I remember the doctor even saying, oh, she's fine as long as she doesn't go any lower. And it's just, it's amazing how, you know, um, how little they really understand about it. Um, and I uh, didn't have my period anymore. I'm trying to remember like all the stuff that started to come up because of it. Um, just really like pale, dry skin. Um, and then in my, so it was, a, well, I should say it was at an all time low, like, junior year of high school and then I was a cheerleader and I was working out on my own as well so it was extreme and funny I just thinking back on it I can't believe how few people realized that I had a problem I don't know if it's because I'm short I don't you know what I mean mm -hmm. um, and then senior year of high school I had a health class and I don't know if this was universe or if the teacher had recognized it in me but she happened to show two different um, movies about a girl with eating disorders. One was, um, have you ever heard of Tracy Gold? Um, she used to be on like Family Matters and um, the movie's called For the Love of Nancy. I, if I saw her face, maybe. Okay, you might, yeah. yeah. So um, there was that one and then another one about a dancer and I was a dancer growing up and I sat there in the class just being like, oh my God, that's me. Like I, you know, actually seeing their behaviors and, and it just, it was exactly the kind of like down to the like little obsessive, like stupid things. Like I even had a, sp a special way that I had to stack the spoons in the drawer and I had to use this one special spoon and this one bowl for my cereal. Just like looking back on it, I laugh because I'm just like, you know, but your brain, oh, it's okay. <laughs> um, your brain's so hyper-focused on just every last detail. Can you relate to that? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. That's good that you brought that up because I totally remember now all the little spoons and like the wooden bowls, Really? Like the different bowls and yeah, I had the same things. Yeah. I've I literally never met anybody else who has said that. So I just wanted to, that's, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah, you brought that up for me. I was so obsessive and just it, everything had to be a certain way at all times. Wow. And so I knew I needed to do something about it, but, you know, of course, there wasn't any information on recovery. So all I knew was I needed to eat more. But, of course, you know, 
what I know now, little did I know then, I was actually going through the recovery symptoms because I started to get you know, really horrible digestive problems and the weight started to come on really quick. So because all I had in terms of knowledge at that point was, well, when you're gaining weight, it means you're eating too much, right? Mm -hmm. um, then it started to go, it kind of morphed more into bulimia at this point. And, uh, you know, you always think it's only going to happen once, yeah. or at least I did. And, you know, like everything else, it became another addiction. And um, because the weight actually continued to go up at this point, because I did sometimes let myself eat, and then sometimes I would heavily restrict. So it was like this back and forth. So then I added even more exercise in. So I was up to like two hours a day of more like um, like cardio based type stuff and weight kept going up and up so like over the years it was just going like this and it was little by little but it definitely was increasing and then still bulimic at this point I decided to start kind of learning more about weightlifting mm -hmm. and I was like oh that must be my answer you know I, if I just build muscle then that's going to be what fixes it and I started to learn more and more about it on my own, and I decided to become a personal trainer. Still bulimic at this point. Yeah. Um, How often? Um, in, in the grand scheme of things, I guess mine's not on the severe side, so it was maybe like anywhere from one to three times a day. Mm -hmm. um, but I think so – from what I just learned recently, they actually call it more atypical anorexia. Have you heard that before? Uh -huh. Okay, so because I was still like, I, I mean, I don't know at the time since I didn't track calories, but I'm going to guess now that I still only ate somewhere between like 700 to 1,000, maybe 1,200 a day. Mm -hmm. So I was still kind of like starving myself, but then like throwing up what I would let myself eat that I considered like bad or you know, like a binge for me was like letting myself eat a brownie. It was ridiculous. <laughs> um, so then I kind of got bit by the bodybuilding book. Um, I think it was like I saw my first magazine and I was like, oh, I just need to embrace being a muscular person. That's what's going to, you know. And so I can, what's that? Like how people started to say strong is the new skinny. Or, yes, yeah. yes. Exactly. I was like, I'll never have to worry about being skinny. You actually have to eat when you're a bodybuilder. So that's going to be super healthy. And I'm eating really good things. So I'm not going to have an addiction anymore. And uh, yeah, I was wrong. <laughs> uh, so it just, you know, it started out small. And it just the more I got obsessed with it. And you see, I think because I had already spent so many years up to this point being so obsessive and restrictive and my body didn't respond that well so I could build muscle really easily but for the life of me like I could not lean out mm. and so I probably was doing bodybuilding for a good seven years mm. and um, then okay so I was yeah and then about a couple of years into it I it was like right around before Thanksgiving no it was Halloween that's what it was and I was just done with the bulimia aspect I was like I'm so sick of this I want to make it through a holiday season without you know throwing up all this good holiday food with my family and stuff and I don't know how I did it probably just like the support of my dad I luckily so grateful I had the most I have the most supportive father but he was like, you know, you can do this. You just, you know, you got to make up your mind and you can do it. And I was able to quit that aspect of it, like cold turkey. So I'm awesome. um, very, very grateful for that. So that was like eight years ago. And then I went on for another, uh, I guess it would be five years, just kind of like the bodybuilding aspect. And then eventually once I upped it to three hours a day, <laughs> then, yeah. Then I started to see progress, progress, you know, and um, I'm trying to remember exactly, like, my health just kept getting worse. So off and on throughout this bodybuilding aspect, I would have to, like, take time off, and then as soon as I would start to get a little bit better, I'd go right back into it again. 
So obviously my gut health just continued to get worse. So what I did throughout that period was just started to uh, condense down the, um, uh, the number of things that I was allowed to eat. So my food intolerances would just keep going like this all the time. And then right at the end of that, my health was just at an absolute all-time low. I couldn't hardly digest anything. I was extremely bloated all the time, almost like someone's like blowing up a balloon inside your stomach. Yeah. Um, and, you know, couldn't hardly tolerate more than maybe like 12 foods at the time. Um, severe upper abdominal pain, just extreme exhaustion, colds and flus like three or four times a year, um, just felt sick all the time. And I, I remember wondering, like, is this what fitness people feel like all the time or is it just me? Mm -hmm. Was that your experience? Oh, yeah. Okay. And I would actually start like talking about it near the end yeah. and everyone would deny it and be like right oh, it must be something you're doing wrong it's like no my personality yes. is not like that like i'm doing everything to the t and people would just could keep denying it because they mm -hmm. were denying themselves you know so. exactly yeah it's it's funny how few people actually open up about how they really feel yeah you know? aside from when you do listen just like in casual conversation because i still work out of a bodybuilder gym so listening to their conversations now, all they talk about is what they can't eat, how much cardio they have to do, how freaking tired they are all the time. And it's like now, you know, you look at it and you're like, wow, everyone there has an eating disorder. Yeah, but in it, you can't see it. You're just like, oh, this is just normal. This is just how it is, you know? Exactly. You have to deal with it and get more willpower. Right. Well, and they glorify it. You yeah. Know, they're just, they're all pumping each other up about it and all the the memes and the fitness magazines and the Instagram and the grind. And I'm so sick of that word. <laughs> I hate that word. Um, and at the very end, I remember even like starting to talk to people. And this was the point where people would say to me, if you just did some steroids, you would get in the kind of shape. And I was already in such shitty health that I was just like, no, this is my breaking point. I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah. So I like decided it was like for what like looking back on it it's weird now but you know deciding to quit bodybuilding altogether your identity becomes so wrapped up in it it's like this is who I am this is who people know me as I'm the fitness freak I'm the you know super jacked chick or whatever yep and uh, that's when I decided to kind of start researching health stuff more well then that went into kind of more orthorexia so I became obsessed with every little thing I put in my mouth can like it, like just constantly researching elimination diets and gut healing so as you've probably done all the gaps body ecology um, SCD uh, I don't even like I could go on keto paleo um, even like a, I wouldn't say I, I personally ever went vegan, but it was getting close to that. Um, and nothing was working, obviously. So then I was, you know, you're on this constant search for like, what's the perfect diet that's going to heal my gut? <laughs> yeah. And like the right supplements. And I went through all different kinds of naturopaths. And no one was really seeming to be able to help me. You know, they just all... Oh, you have leaky gut. Okay, duh. Thanks. <laughs> you yeah. know, and uh, I was, I just, it was horrible. Like, I, def I, will, I will say, like, in terms of depression, I'm not really a depressed person, but that, like, made me really start going downhill, and I felt like, am I ever going to find an answer? And I was just, like, the sickest I'd ever been in my entire life. Like, times just in tears just being like please just let it all end if i have to feel this way forever and like that's you know i don't like admitting that but it's the truth you know i just felt like i had suffered for so many years at this point and just not have answers you know yep. um and then it was like let's see that would be the end of 2017 i ended a, a five-year very toxic relationship mm -hmm. And then found this other naturopath because, you know, I was still on the hunt. And right at that same time that I found that naturopath was just when I stumbled across 
uh, your YouTube videos and then Elisa's follow the intuition. Mm -hmm. And I just remember being like, oh my God, this is it. And of course it was like almost scarier than everything else, even though it felt like it took, you know, all this willpower and extremism in order to do the other stuff. Mm -hmm. When you're that kind of extreme person, it's easier almost to do those things than it is recovery. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Huh? Yeah, I could relate to that. <laughs> I figured you could. Yeah, I mean, even just the parallels of our story are so similar. Like, oh, really? Restrictive, yeah, just kind of like um, restrictive to anorexia, to then fitness, to then okay. develop all of these gut issues and hormone issues, to then trying to find now something to heal something yeah. or everything that was caused from the fitness. And it's just yeah. like the parallels between that. The same. Wow. Yeah. I don't think I've ever met anybody who's had a story that's similar. So. Yeah, it's crazy. Wow. So then it was kind of like I, I had decided because at that point I still believed that the gut side of it was going to be more like what the naturopath was going to help me with. Mm -hmm. So I decided to do them side by side. And I remember explaining to my doctor that I was going to do this. And he was really like, confused about it. I wouldn't say being a naturopath, he was a little bit more open to it than like a conventional doctor, but he still was like, okay, but you got to make sure like you're not eating stuff that hurts your gut, you know? Mm -hmm. And I remember just having to kind of, okay, you know, in the back of my mind, just be like, he doesn't get it, you know? Cause yeah. I couldn't just be like, Hey, go watch all these videos and then you'll understand, yeah. you know? But um, I just made that decision that I was going to do that. And so alongside he was having me do this whole like herbal kind of treatment, you know, like a bunch of pills with things like oregano and golden seal. And I'm sure you, or did you do some of that stuff too? At one point, yeah. Okay. I invested like thousands and thousands oh, of dollars. Definitely. Supplement. Definitely. In just one year alone with like all the doctor stuff, mm -hmm. I spent like $6,300 and I still wow. didn't get better. So. Yeah. Wow. So um, I was kind of like, it was confusing trying to do them side by side, right? Because he was wanting me to be like very, very strict paleo. But then at the same time, I was like, I need to be challenging my fear foods. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and so there was kind of like that battle for a little bit. But I will say that the more I actually gave into recovery, the more, just like you had said, because I remember reaching out to you and saying, you know, in that I have like all these because I'll get to that in a second, like I, um, all the infections I had, and you said you got to give your body enough nourishment in order to be able to fight that stuff off. And that was what really kind of sank in for me. I was like, that makes so much sense. It's so simple, but, you know, it's not really something that any doctor ever explains to you. So, yeah, um, yeah. so I don't know if you want me to go into, like, the recovery process. Yeah, because I think that a lot of people develop digestive issues like that you explained that I faced from mm -hmm. the diet itself, from restriction, or right. they faced some sort of digestive problem, then they went into all of these elimination diets to try mm -hmm. to heal it, and then it just got worse and worse, and worse. So I think, you know, it's good for people to hear, like, your process, yeah. too, how, how, what you were facing, because you were facing a lot of gut issues, and then what you did kind of to get out of that. Right. Okay. Do you, do you hear that a lot with um, people that you talk to that they've um, done a lot of elimination diets and, and stuff to fix their gut? Really? Oh yeah. Um, and the most common thing is the more that they cut out, the worse that their digestion gets. Yeah. You yeah, know, it makes sense. So that well, was, uh, go ahead. Oh, that was just my experience. Oh. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, what we know now is like the more foods you take out, certain bacteria in your gut start dying off, the ones that need those kind of foods to survive. And so when you start adding them back in, your body's like, um, I don't know what this is. I don't know how to process it, you know? Yeah. Um, but it figures it out. Yeah, exactly. It just takes that time and consistency to show that it's coming back and the, get the conveyor belt moving again. And everything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so I only checked my weight after the first month. And I still, to this day, since then, I don't know how much I weigh, which I don't care. So yeah. it's awesome. Yeah. Um, so I put on like 20 pounds in a month. Mm -hmm. And it was the heaviest I'd ever been in my entire life. And it definitely was scary. 
But at the same time, I, I decided to do that because I really wanted to be able to document it. Um, because I wanted just, you know, to be able to show other people that like I started here and yes, you do go through this process and it gets better. Cause I think deep down, I really believed it was going to work mm -hmm. even with how scared I was. Yeah. Um, and just, you know, the extreme hunger setting in and that of course is always really scary mm -hmm. and just, it's like. I don't know. It's almost, you really feel gluttonous in the beginning. Yep. That's the word I use. I'm like, I'm just a glutton, you know, I'm just um, lazy and all yeah. of those words. So yeah. Definitely. And feeling like, is it just always going to be like this? Am I just going to eat this way for the rest of my life mm -hmm. and become four or 500 pounds, you know? Yep. Um, and uh, yeah, so just continued the process. And I think what helped me was going back to the videos over and over. Mm -hmm. Since I didn't have somebody in my direct life who really understood what I was going through, there was no way to get that like constant affirmation of that I'm doing the right thing besides obviously coming from myself, which um, kind of at that same time, I got into more like law of attraction and affirmations and that, and that helped me so much through that process of just like, coming up with affirmations, saying things like, I love my body and I'm healing and I'm doing the right thing. And I would try to just like look at my stomach and be like, I'm healing you. You know, as corny as that sounds like. Oh yeah. You know, I, I felt the same way. Like this is just cheesy and corny, yeah. but then it actually works. You know, it does. It yeah. does. It's almost like your body starts to realize you're not fighting it anymore. You know, and I really believe now that I've been through this process that the more you even think thoughts like I hate my body and it's disgusting and stuff, it kind of reflects because it's like, I mean, they've even, if you've ever heard them do like studies on like they'll take three different plants and like say really hateful things to one and then say like really nice things to one of them and then just keep one of them kind of like as a standard. And the one that they say really hateful things to, it just withers away and dies. And it's just amazing what the energy of like positivity or negative negativity can do. Wow, that's fascinating. That's awesome. You've never heard that before? Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. It makes sense. And your body hears everything that you think, even if you're not even saying it. Your body so feels that. And it's it senses that it's in that negative environment or suppressive environment. Definitely. Just like if you were in a toxic relationship, you know, you're going to like people end up having, not just like if they're physically beaten, but like physical illness from being in those kind of relationships mm -hmm. and mental illness for that matter. Totally. And a lot of recovery is like you're healing from a toxic relationship totally. between you and your body and then the eating disorder and you have oh it's the parallels between that. You could read a book on like healing from abusive relationships and apply that to recovery. You know? Totally. Oh, well said. Yeah. That's such a good point. Yeah. Um, okay. So I had been doing all this herbal treatment with the doctor and it just, I like, I could never get up to a full dosage of everything because literally everything he would give me would make me so sick. And, you know, my liver had been so taxed for so long that I don't detox very well, right? Mm -hmm. So even with all the Epsom salt baths and the activated charcoal and drinking tons of water and all that, it just, like, I couldn't. So I was, I just always would stay at, like, minimum doses, mm -hmm. dosages of things. Mm -hmm. um, and when I, like, you know, progressively as you go through recovery, you kind of start to give in more. Yeah. And you... I think as you said before, it's you get to a point where you don't even really have a choice. Yeah. Your body kind of yep. your body kind of takes over for you. Mm -hmm. And that's I think what was starting to happen to me. And so I really attribute because I oh I forgot to say, I was um, at the start of working with that doctor when we finally did a, a DNA stool test, he found 13 different infections. So between like parasites and bacterial infections and so, of course, that was at that time what I thought the answer really was, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, but I really believe that as a result of giving my body enough fuel and, like, letting the weight gain happen and the water retention and doing the affirmations, that's what in November of 
2018 is when I finally got a test result back that every single one of those infections was gone. Wow. Completely yes. gone. Yeah. And I'm just like, if that was due to solely the treatment, that would have worked a long time ago. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not trying to discredit him. He's, ama he's amazing. Yeah. But there really is so much to be said for when you give your body the energy to do the healing that it's that it knows how to do on its own. Exactly. And a lot of people that go on these healing diets, they're starving. They're, they go yes. into the energy deficit. They're malnourished. So no matter what you do to try to, you know, cleanse your body or heal your body, your body needs the energy to do healing. Yes. It's so true. Yeah. And there's only so much of like the, you know, the quote unquote clean foods that you're able to eat anyway. Cause yeah. you know, you can eat like sometimes three times as much food to get up to the caloric amount that your body needs for energy. Yeah. You know? And then um, when the digestion yeah. is shot, then you, oh. it's hard to even digest any of those foods that are commonly accepted on those elimination diets. So oh it's 22, you know? So true. Because, you know, with all the extra fiber and, I mean, your body's already going through hell as it is. So, <laughs> yep. um, I even, uh, before I started this whole process, I think when I found recovery videos, I actually hadn't tracked my calories in a long time. But at this point, I was really curious to see because with all the fat I was eating from keto and stuff, mm -hmm. I thought I was eating a lot of calories. Mm -hmm. And when I finally like looked at it, I was only eating like seven to 900 a day. So yeah, I'm starving myself trying to heal my gut at the same time. That's yeah. impossible. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it's just, it's amazing what uh, you can kind of convince yourself that you're, you're doing to yeah. heal yourself, but <laughs> yeah. the um, self-deception kind of so, yeah. do. Exactly. How did but, you get it? Oh, go ahead. But I was just going to say, but then, you know, it's, um, it's encouraged by doctors and society and all of that. Right. So it's I mean, so the whole process of recovery. Yeah. 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 So then it's hard to go into this mindset. You're already doubting yourself in the process anyways. And then the, your surrounding environment is doubtful yeah. and completely on the opposite side. So it, it's a challenging thing. Definitely. process, You know, definitely. That's why I'm so glad that there are people out there like yourself that are sharing what you went through and just everything you've learned throughout recovery and probably even just through helping clients it's helped you learn more about maybe parts of eating disorders that you didn't have as much of totally oh yeah yeah you learn even more working with yeah. everyone else totally so you learn totally. more about yourself oh you know? my gosh more than it's you know it's funny when you really become recovered you see how much more time and space you have to focus on other things. And in a way you kind of do feel like you're, you're the same person, but it feels like you've changed into a different person. I don't know if you experienced that, but yeah, well, just the whole recovery process in and of itself is a transformative rebirth. Yes. You know, you know, a lot of people focus on, okay, I want to get back to like my pre ED weight or my pre ED self where I didn't care or whatever. It's like, you don't want to go back to where you're coming from. You're going to come out a completely transformed person. That's way better than that. You're going to learn a lot more. You're going to understand yourself a lot more and it's going to be way better. You don't want to go back, you know? Absolutely. I agree. So yeah. I agree. <laughs> How did you, you said that you weren't counting calories. I think it's really hard for a lot of people to get away from counting calories, tracking, weighing, calculating, just obsessing about, you know, calories and all that and macros or whatever. How did you get away from that? How'd you stop? Was that cold turkey too, or was it a process? Oh, well, I think honestly, I hadn't I had stopped tracking during the time that I was trying to heal my gut because I realized that it was kind of pointless for me to be trying to do that and heal myself. Okay. Um, I'm trying to remember because I think the last time I ever tracked was like when I did like the if it fits your macros, my fitness pal thing. But even that, I remember transitioning out of that and it was weird because you get in such a habit of measuring everything that it's just part of what you do. Mm -hmm. um, 
I think it was a slow process, but I think I saw that even when I did track things, I never really got that much in terms of progress from that. So um, at least during the time where I was doing bodybuilding, I think because I was already uh, eating so strict anyway, and at least like at that time I was measuring, I don't know. You know, that's, that's such a good question. I think it honestly just was because I decided to focus on my health instead of being extreme. I'm sure that's so much harder for for um, some people. So I don't mean to make that sound like it's easy. Oh, yeah. Well, I just, I'm, yeah, it's different for everyone. And for some people, it is easier to go cold turkey quicker. And for others, right. it's more of a process. And there's nothing wrong with any process. But it's right. just, you know, because right. I know me it's it's hard for me to even identify that process i'm like i don't it, i don't know it was it was just right? a process kind of like what you're saying definitely you kind of just get to a point where you're just exhausted and i did cold turkey with the bulimia too and did I, you okay so it was cold turkey with that that's kind of more just how i worked it was just like i can't slowly have things in and no. have them out it's like no i can't that's like giving a shot of alcohol to an alcoholic and being like, okay, no more, you know, it's exactly. not going to work for me. No, I agree. I agree. Totally. Yeah. So pretty much that's like how you healed your GI tract and stuff. And so what about the changes with your body? You know, I'm, did you retain water? Oh yeah. Like you said, you gained weight quickly. And so how did you deal with that? Well, for one thing, I went out it, like pretty immediately and bought some new clothes. Mm -hmm. And I decided that, you know, I think a mistake that a lot of people, including my clients, make is to not just buy bigger clothes, but like clothes they don't feel good in. Mm -hmm. And so that they think they're hiding from the world, but I think they're in fact making themselves feel worse about the whole situation. So I decided to kind of just buy comfortable, bigger, but also kind of cute clothes, you know. I think it's, I feel like it's a, it's a good time to kind of explore maybe new styles that maybe you've never worn before. So like cute, like flowy tops so, so that you're not wearing stuff that's like sticking to areas that you feel like are getting bigger faster. I think for me, the more I could wear stuff that like kind of hung off of me, so that I wasn't focused on those areas so much, I started to forget about them a lot easier, which I'm not saying was easy. Yeah. But um, I think when you try to continue to wear clothes that you wore before recovery, it's just, it makes the whole process so discouraging. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it makes you feel even bigger than you actually are. Um, so that was one of the first things I did. And then I, just had this, I love, I'm a big um, 80s freak. I love 80s, like everything. Mm -hmm. And I decided to do this kind of like flash dance photo shoot mm -hmm. exactly as I was. I was like, I'm not going to prep for this. I'm not going to try to lose weight for this. I'm going to do it exactly the way I am at the heaviest I've ever been. And that was such a liberating experience because I thought it was going to be so like scary and stuff but I had so much fun with it and like I feel like that was the first in terms of mentally being like wow I can accept myself enough to do this and I mean I can accept my body you know totally that's so awesome because yeah a lot of people wait and like okay I'll do this once I'm recovered they'll right. never do it like in the recovery and that's where the healing happens so you true know, the mental shifts is when you do it you know, in the midst of recovery when you feel like you're worst or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I, I know, I know. I hate to say that because I don't want it to come across yeah. like I'm saying, oh, I was so disgusting. I just mean exactly. your, your mental, personal worst, you know. To challenge yourself. Yeah. Because you know? you're not, you're I mean, good enough no matter where you're at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm always amazed, like, people are always saying, I'm too embarrassed to put out a picture of myself when I was at my heaviest. No one... I don't want people to know that I looked like that. And it's like, but, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, that's, this is the whole thing that people doubt during the process is like, what if this always stays this way? And it's like, it might not. So mm -hmm. anyway, yeah. just to see that as evidence. I know you were like the only one that have actually put out there like the different stages, mm -hmm. like while you were, in the bodybuilding world and then during the um what was it raw vegan 
Yeah. All right. And mm-hmm. then you were like 90 pounds and then, you know, during recovery. And I was like, that was what made me go, okay, I'm going to do this mm-hmm. because like everyone else was just like, here's me after. And I'm like, okay, that's great. But did you actually go through the stuff that you say you did? Yeah. You know? Well, that's awesome then. Cause yeah, I wish I would have seen that more too, you know? Cause then you feel a lot, you feel like you're doing something wrong. If your body does something, goes yeah. this, then you're like, well, nobody else, I don't see this in, in anyone else. So is this okay? Right. Yeah, right. exactly. So. so I did the same thing as you too. I wanted to say is that yeah. at my heaviest, uh-huh. you know, that's when I took, I went and I got headshots and lifestyle shots. Did you really? Yeah. Wow. And so it was that where that, that one of you in the white dress comes from? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and that's beautiful. I love that picture. Yeah. So, yeah, we're good enough right then. So, you know, and it's just one of those challenges that really, like, shows your body, you know, we're in this. Like, you're safe. Yeah. And you still use them for your business, right? Um, I think I still have some of them up there. Yeah. Um, I have like one of the main ones, like as this banner that I have for my business. Cause I'm like, just cause I look different now doesn't mean I'm not so proud of that. Exactly. Yeah. Cause there was part of me for a minute that was like, well, shouldn't I have an updated one? But I'm like, no, people need to see that. I was like happy with myself at that time. Exactly. Yeah. That's awesome. And that's why I still have some of those photos. Yeah. 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 So the next thing was I decided to kind of find examples of women that I admired that were either kind of similar to me or even bigger than me so that I could see like it doesn't matter what someone looks like, whether or not I think they're an amazing person. Yeah. So um, finding examples of that was extremely helpful to me to be like, well, I think that this woman's really amazing and she is super confident and owns her stuff. So why the heck should I care so much if I, you know, am gaining a little bit of weight during recovery? Yeah, that's awesome. I found that too. I started to see people for more than their appearance too, as my mind was healing. And I started to see that beauty encompassed a lot more than just looking a certain way, you know? So like how kind they were, how funny they were, how, you know, confident they were, and just all those different characteristics that I started to respect more. I was like, you know, I like that, you know? And it's not just about looking a certain way. That's not just what beauty is, you know? Right, right. Well, and realistically, if we took like two people side by side, one person's like the most amazing, kind-hearted, loving person ever, and then someone who's maybe quote unquote what society deems perfect, but they're not any of those other things, nine times out of 10, people are going to want to be around the person who's really kind and loving, because who wants to be around someone who doesn't have substance? Yeah. Oh, totally. And that person can become real unattractive real quick. Oh, yeah. so, <laughs> real quick. <laughs> I, can, I found that with males and females, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can, you know, reflect back on myself, and I'm sure at different parts of my life, that's how I was, too. Oh, know? yeah. So. And, like, when you're in the bodybuilding world, like, when you're so – because it's very, like, cult-like, if you yeah. think about it. Yeah. And all you th- or I, I all you think is that like bodybuilder guys are attractive at that point. Yeah. And then when you get out of recovery, you're like, eh, I kind of want to talk about more than your abs, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, and what so, workout you're taking and protein, yes. you know? Yes. Like, what else do you have to bring to the table, you know? Yeah. But that's even true of like us during recovery. It's like I want to be more than just how I look and how much I weigh and what I'm eating like down to, I don't know if you ever, like it's almost this, um, not just entitlement mentality, but superiority complex when you, when you're in that stuff, like you go to the grocery store and when you have your cart only full of all this healthy stuff, you're like, look at me, I'm a good person. And it's like, that has nothing to do with your self worth. Yeah. Yep. Totally. I, yeah. I remember that too. And it was a huge ego trip and pride and all of that stuff that doesn't define us as humans, you know? And so through your recovery, then I'm sure like you mentioned that you had a minor form of an identity crisis in a sense. Oh yeah. 
So is that how you started to find your true identity again, is by looking at those things in yourself and other people? And, or how did you do that? How did you? Definitely that, for sure. Um, I also started to explore old hobbies that I hadn't had in a long time. Um, I've been a singer since I was little, but I dropped it for a long time because I was always so exhausted that, you know, I, and I just didn't have the time or the energy for it. So that, and it, like that specifically, because it's something that I, well, actually I shouldn't say that first. To be truthful, because I was so self-conscious with the eating disorder, kind of putting myself out there like that was extremely scary and I felt like I wasn't good. Mm. But the more I started to be like, you know what, I'm going to challenge this fear and it's something that I love, so I'm going to put it out there and like getting this overwhelming response of just people that were so kind to me about it. And I just, it showed me like, I don't have to be afraid to show sides of me that I previously, you know, been afraid to show. Mm -hmm. um, and so feeling confident about that again, and uh, getting in touch with a friend that I hadn't talked to in years that we actually lost touch because of the eating disorder. Um, I guess what I'm saying is finding worth and self-love and hobbies outside of food and my body and things where it didn't really matter what I looked like to be good at it or to enjoy it or, you know. Um, yeah. Shutting the false identities and getting back yes. in touch with your true identity and, you know, who you are before all of this. Definitely. And like you, we were talking about before recording is that's kind of how you got into fitness is because you were already um, like into that lifestyle. So you decided to create your whole life and you, that became your identity. And you, yes. so you got into a fitness education and then your career and all that. So yes. that's what I wanted to talk about. Okay. Well, I think too, I feel like the whole, you know, needing to find an identity based around fitness and your body and that kind of thing is it's deep down it's a way if if you kind of if you were to get in tune with it like you do when you recover mm -hmm. is that i really actually want to feel good about myself and i want to feel like i want to feel loved i want to feel like i'm accepted and the problem is you never really feel like that when you're trying to do any of that stuff so recovery really is the only way that and you know working on yourself whatever that means whether it's therapy mm -hmm. or self-help or whatever Mm -hmm. um, of learning how to find your self worth outside of whatever it is that you're, you know, you, you've deemed to be um, wrapped up in your whole identity. Yeah. Um, so if you're wanting me to talk about like how I got into fitness or? Yeah, just because that became like one of those false identities in us, okay. you know? And so like for me with nutrition, getting a nutrition okay. degree is, I was already obsessed with nutrition because of the disorder you know, that I was like, I might as well get a degree in it and base my whole career around it. You know, it was the same with you with fitness, you know, being Definitely. a fitness trainer. Yeah, just um, since it's all I talked about and all I did anyway, I was like, well, I might as well do it for a living. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, it's funny because I think about the first two years of my career, because I've been doing this for nine years now, um, I was still bulimic and my clients didn't know about it. And I was preaching all this fitness and health stuff and I wasn't even healthy mm -hmm. you know and uh it, I think the more extreme I got the more extreme I expected of clients and and just to see where I am now with how I this well I should say this process has actually helped me approach my clients in a much healthier way mm -hmm. because you know I don't, I don't know it's like I said it's such a it's such a cult kind of world it's a very small world where everybody in fitness kind of thinks that everyone is like them yeah it's weird right it's yeah. like but then if you've ever you know even during that time you go out in public like i remember times going to the airport and stuff mm -hmm. and just like, like taking a minute to look around and was like nobody looks like that yeah <laughs> yeah that's what helped me in my recovery is to start to not just focus on those few people that were like what I was doing, it was focusing yeah. on the majority that were just normal people. And it was like broadening my horizon and being 
more realistic you know yeah seeing like I mean, oh, there's a lot of normalcy out there you know exactly exactly yeah. and that that even like normal looks so different on yeah. everybody yeah right? exactly yeah there's body diversity and that's beautiful that's you know that's what makes us you and i agree we don't need a world of like the same person that would be boring you know but I agree. it would be really boring <laughs> So how did you, a lot of people come into recovery also with nutrition degrees or careers or fitness careers and you know, it's hard for a lot of people to deal with recovery when that's been their identity and their career, you know, and you kept your fitness um, training job while you were in recovery. Right. So I know for a lot of people that's really hard to do. How did you deal with that? Right. I'd be lying if I said that it wasn't extremely difficult yeah. in the first year. I felt like a fraud in a lot of ways. I just felt like I had kind of failed and given up on everything I'd worked so hard for. Mm -hmm. But because I'm a very open, vulnerable person with my clients anyway, I decided to tell them what I was going to go through. And it was scary and it was hard because I, you know, and a lot, I didn't want them to look down on me because I knew that I was going to go through this process. But I also was just like, maybe if I'm open with them, then they'll understand what I'm going through. And maybe I can help them as a result of this, mm -hmm. you know, which, yeah. which did end up happening. But I think that I took a lot of power away from the eating disorder by being willing to talk about it and mm -hmm. say, Guys, even though I'm not bulimic anymore and maybe not quote unquote anorexic, I still have realized that I have a lot of leftover eating disorder behaviors and this is what I'm learning that I'm going to have to do. So yeah, I mean, as a trainer, I went through the, the weight gain process and, and uh, there were definitely times where I questioned like, is this what I want to do with my life anymore? You know, um, I... Uh, especially being in the environment that I'm in. So I have my own business, but I basically it's like, um, it's kind of like renting a booth for hairstylists. I just mm -hmm. kind of give them a fee and a uh, monthly fee and then the rest of it's mine. Mm -hmm. um, but it's still, a, it's primarily a bodybuilder gym. So they have a whole bunch of those kind of people walking around. And a lot of people that used to kind of talk to me on a regular basis and we would talk together about bodybuilding had stopped talking to me and or they'd say, you just didn't want it bad enough, you know? <laughs> That's the worst. Yeah. yeah. You're just like, because I took my health back, that means I didn't want it. That You're right. You're yeah. right. I didn't. Yeah. But they don't see it as health. They think by, you know, what we were doing before was health, even though our health was plummeting, you know? I just, it blows my mind that any of them can really think that they're that healthy. Yeah, I know. I even look back to me and I, I thought, you know, it was healthy, even though I wasn't feeling healthy, but because I was told and I researched that this was the most healthiest diet and looking that lean was healthy that I, you know, thought it should be. But so when you were going through it, did you, when you say that you weren't feeling well while you were doing all the fitness stuff, did you tell yourself like, it's going to get better eventually? Or like, how did you kind of rationalize that in your own head well so in the fitness days it wasn't about that necessarily like so in the orthorexia day when I was trying to heal from the yeah. fitness days yeah I was telling myself like I'm just gonna heal and one day I'm gonna be so healthy and so right. you know right. the clarity of my mind and my the purity of my body that's what I was telling myself that eventually that was what's gonna happen totally. in the fitness days it was more just like through my research that looking that way de defined health. So because if I was looking that way, then I was healthy. And it was just okay. this weird thing where I wasn't feeling like my health started to decline. I started to become extremely exhausted. Right. I didn't want to be intimate. I became more and more right. obsessed with food. My hair started falling out and having vertigo and the bloating right. and the constipation and all of that. Right. But I just never questioned or related it to my diet or being that lean because okay. I was just like this is what health is so this must be from some other thing it can't be from my diet right. my okay yeah okay 
So it wasn't even a thought in your mind at that point. Yeah. Gotcha. But then after the comp, the last competition and I was binging and then I started purging and then my health got even worse. Then I was like, I need to heal this. This is like terrible. And then the gaps was first and then. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So, yep. Oh, it's boy, a boy. slippery slope that a lot of people go down, it really is. you know? It's, it's funny, not funny, haha, but just interesting how the different eating disorders kind of feed into each other. Yeah. Um, I, it's very rare that I've ever met anyone that hasn't had multiple different ones. Yeah. And they kind of just creep into the next yes. one, you know, yes. and then you think like you're doing better because that's what I thought. So it started out not eating all day and taking Adderall and losing weight to then you know what, I'm going to become healthy and fit. And it just morphed into that. And then, yes. oh no, I need to heal everything. So then it morphed into all those clean diets. And so, yeah, I never questioned that it was an eating disorder. Right. It was a problem. I kind of believe that, you know, right, maybe not all cases, but in a lot of like obesity cases, that that could very well be what's going on. And people just assume that they're lazy they could have started out just like all of us did, you know, and maybe they've been doing it longer or maybe it just looked a little different for them, but you could see how easily that could happen. Oh, totally. But, I see that a lot with people. It, you know, they've um, gained a lot of weight over the years. I don't know. I've talked about this before, but you look into their story and from a, it started from a young age when they were a ch child and they were shamed by either a loved one or someone at school bullied about their weight. Um, or just they were bullied in some other way and it made mm -hmm. them not good enough. And then that built off of later on that, you know, they were put on a diet because they were like the chubbier sibling or something, you know, right. like, there's so many different things where it could have started. And then, so they, they dieted at a young age, then they would gain weight when they couldn't diet any longer and their hunger kicked in and then they would diet again. And seriously, this this is the the whole yo yo process for a lot of people, and then they get into adulthood with the sh same shame beliefs, guilt around food, guilt around their body, shame around their body, still dieting, then binging, then dieting, then binging, and yeah, that's like so common. So it's really unfortunate, and it's getting worse with our culture today. You know, well, all the more reason to you yeah. know, speak out, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. How did you too, like, how did you deal with other people's judgments? Because you were still in a gym and then regardless of the gym, like that's a hard one for people. How did you deal with other people's judgments on what you were doing? You know, I was fortunate enough that people weren't very verbal about it. So even if they were thinking it and chances are they were, I, I think that because I'm already not a drama person, I kind of stay out of, of uh, the business there. Yeah. Um, I think I got lucky in that respect, but I think I felt it all the time. Yeah. I tried my best to just look at it like I was doing something that none of them would understand anyway, mm -hmm. and that this was going to allow me to help more people, which was ultimately the reason I got into personal training. It wasn't, I mean, yes, it was because I was obsessed with fitness, but I really did want to make a difference and help people. And this is just, it's allowing me to help people in a way that's 10 times more meaningful than, you know, helping them lose 20 pounds or whatever, you know, yeah. helping, helping someone to really believe that they're worthy as a person and develop a healthy relationship with food in their body. Mm -hmm. That's, I just continue to try to tell myself that over and over. And I was so, so lucky that I didn't have people that actually said anything about what I was going through. I kind of expected it, to yeah. be honest. So yeah. I don't know if you had people that criticized you openly. Um, I was pretty lucky that, like, my family was supportive, even though they didn't understand it. You okay. know, they didn't say anything. But I had the comments, like, when I would go out and about, someone said once, like, oh, are you pregnant? You know? And I was like, that was, you know. Who I, asked that? <laughs> Some person that, so I had been going to this local fruit stand. Um, so they saw me when I was, you know, super lean and stuff. So oh, okay. they assumed that. And yeah, 
So yeah. that was something I had to deal with. But I was lucky that it didn't happen all the time. I hear some yeah. of the things that I, the people that I, you know, talk to, and it's just oh crazy. Like what they have to deal with, it's just terrible. What people say up out front, I'm like, I would never say that, you know? Never. Yeah. Never. I mean, no matter what somebody's going through, that's not my business. Like, I don't know what they're going through. And how come, like, if something happened, like, why is the topic, the, the first topic of conversation, like, about people's weight? It's like, oh, you've either lost weight or you've gained weight. It's like, yes. hey, hi to you, too. Like, exactly. Or um, when you're in a place where somebody thinks you look better than them, then it's always like, oh, I need to... You know, I need to lose weight so I can look like you. And it's just like, yeah. can we stop those, you know? Like, anymore, that is not what I'm thinking when I'm talking to somebody. Yeah. So, like, they'll bring it up and I just go, just so you know, I don't see you with critical yeah. eyes like that. Yeah. I know. I try to tell people that, too. And, like, um, or they'll be talking about, oh, I shouldn't be eating this bread right now. Or, oh, I'm having too much sugar. And I'm like, yeah. No, you need that bread. Like it's good for your brain and it's good for your body. Like if you're craving that, you should eat that. And they just, they just look at me. <laughs> totally. And they're like, are you psycho? Yeah. <laughs> so so true. True. Yeah. So it's, just, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, unless somebody's open to it, there's only so much you can say. Yeah. Right? And that's why I just leave it at that. You know, I'm not going to have a debate and stuff, but those yeah. little opportunities you know exactly yeah I just had somebody at work today say you know he wanted me to agree with him that we're glorifying obesity by the health at every size movement oh. and I said well no I said I understand where you're coming from but you know again you can only see, you just like drop little seeds and you're like okay yeah. I'm gonna stop talking. Yeah. his eyes completely glazed over but you know. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen to that seed. That's all we are is just seed pointers, you know? That's so true. Yeah. That's so true. another big thing I wanted to ask you about is your extreme okay. hunger, which okay. is what a lot of people is like the scariest thing, you know? Okay. So how, how was your extreme hunger? How did it come on? And then how did you deal with it? You know, what did it look like? It was like in terms of like, what did I eat or just like, yeah, did it come on immediately? Was okay. it like extreme to where you were eating like 10,000 calories a day like me? Yeah. Or, you know, and then did you give in all the way or did you slowly kind of? Gotcha. Okay. Um, it did come on like almost immediately. It was like just my body was like, oh, it's coming in. You know, we got to get as much of this in as possible. And I think because I was saturating my brain so much with the videos mm -hmm. and I think, yeah, your book and Elisa's book, I just really wanted to learn as much as I could about this. Cause that's just the kind of person I am. So yeah. I knew that like, if I put the same energy into this that I put into learning about fitness and all those elimination diets, I'm going to get that to sink in my subconscious. That's and, right. uh, it yeah. So it came on quick and I mean, even stuff like, I know it like sounds gross now, but maybe it'll help if I say it. <laughs> um, I just remember taking like these chocolate chip cookies I had and like slathering ghee all over them because that's just what I had in my pantry. I was like using up it. And I remember thinking like, this is so gross, but it tastes so amazing. And like, just like in the kitchen, just being like, oh my God, like, like a starving person, you know, which I was, but you know, you, you envision a starving person to be severely mal malnourished physically yeah. and that's not always the case and so yeah that went on I'm trying to remember exactly how long that kind of behavior went on because yeah I mean I don't I think I tried to track a couple days just to get an idea of what that mini mod um, calorie guidelines would look like yeah. just to make sure that I was able to hit what is it again it's been so long since I've looked at it the like 2,500 calorie. Yeah. 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 Okay. Just making sure like that was like a minimum, but that I would let myself do however much over that I wanted. Yeah. Um, I think the most of it for me was within the first like two months. Oh, okay. And then because I was letting it happen after that, it just very, very gradually started to die down. Okay. And it was, it's like really interesting the first day that you realize like, huh, I don't, 
feel the need to eat that much anymore yeah. like I did before, yeah. you know? Yeah. So you went, you just 100%, you're like, I'm just going to allow myself to eat anything that I'm craving, all yep. of it. See, yep. and that, that's awesome because that's like the best for some people, you know, they, for whatever reason, you know, they, they go slower. But yep. for like, if you can, and if your body's asking for that, like the best way to go about recovery is to just allow your body to do yep. that whatever it's asking for, however much it's asking for, you know, and that's you recover quicker, you know, because you're just letting it happen. Like you're on a private island all by yourself. You yes. Know? <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I wanted it out of the way, you know. I was like, I don't want to deal with this for a long time. I want this done. Like, let's yeah. go, you yeah. know. But I think um, it was the, diff the most difficult parts were probably the weight and then the exercise portion for me, which – it's interesting because I thought it would be the other way around, but I guess I was more obsessed with the exercise portion than the food. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know if that's just because you tell yourself that that's what you need to do to continue to be healthy, especially when you have all this food coming in. Yeah, it's that compensation somewhere where you don't want to let go of control. You know, right. like, well, okay, I'm letting go of in or letting into my hunger, but. I'm still going to hold on to exercise because then I won't feel like completely a hundred percent vulnerable and like out of control, you know? Yeah. And I think I told myself I'm already doing a million times less than I've ever done. So mm -hmm. that should be fine. Mm -hmm. But you know, trying to make yourself even do 15 minutes when you're exhausted. Yeah. It's too much. Yeah. So you faced extreme exhaustion. As oh well. man. Yeah. More than I, I thought I ever had in my life like I thought it was bad when I was sick and I know that you've talked about this on your channel before um that it almost gets worse in re not for everybody I know not everyone deals yeah. with the same symptoms but it definitely got worse for me because my body was like okay you need to completely shut down now yeah like let me work on your organs now please <laughs> yeah how long did that last for you um the extreme well if I mean, it's hard to say how it would have been if I would have given in all the way with the exercise portion. Mm -hmm. So it probably went on for a good year. Year. And um, I'm still, my health is still recovering. I'm a million times better than I was. Yeah. But, you know, it just, it looks different for yeah. everyone. And when you do a lot of extreme stuff to yourself, I think that's the other thing I was going to say is like sometimes you have to sit back and like actually think about how much you did. So that it helps you be more patient when you're like, oh, it's only been two years. Like I did that for 17 years and I've only been in recovery for two years. I should cut myself a break, you know? Totally. Yeah. Instead of being, we can fall into that of condemning the body. Of, why aren't you recepting or receiving yes. this yet? Like, why aren't you recovered yet? And it's like, well, at least we don't have to go through recovery as long as we did put it through. Some people though, too, like, just want to put that out there because some people are like, well, I only dieted for like six months and it's taking a long time. But, you know, again, it's all relative and there's nothing wrong. Right. Yeah. Recovery. Yeah. Take a couple of years, you know, depending on how committed you are to. So it sounds right. like, you know, for the, a, a lot of the parts you were committed, you know, and then the exercise. Will you touch on that? How was the exercise, you know, because that's like the hardest thing for a lot of people to let go of is the exercise. Like what, like what did I do or like, yeah. So did you take a complete break from exercise and yeah. then, you know, what, what kind of exercise were you doing before? And then did you like cut out certain exercises and how long did you, you know, keep that exercise to a minimum or out of the picture altogether? Uh, I, in retrospect, you know, shoulda, coulda, woulda, right? I, I think it would have been ideal if I would have taken it out altogether, but I convinced myself that little bits would be okay. And so I'm trying to remember for a while, I think I was trying to keep in like three or four days of like, um, like body weight type stuff. But I would still, because it's very easy when you're still wrapped up in the eating disorder mindset to still be obsessive with exercise. Even if you're not doing a lot, it's still, like, for example, let's say I had 
written out what I was going to do, right? And so if I had only planned to work out for 30 minutes, but I hadn't finished it yet, my brain would go, well, you got to finish this, mm -hmm. you know? And so I think that's why it's so important looking at it now to take that break from it, to separate your association with, I have to exercise with, you know, I'm allowed to eat this much food. I guess I, what I'm saying is to be able to see like, no, my body's okay without exercise. And I actually start to feel better faster when I'm not expending all this extra energy trying to exercise. So gradually I would just cut it down more and more to where eventually all I was able to do was go for very, and I'm saying very light walks, like maybe five minutes sometimes was all I could handle. And it's, I definitely had the guilt aspect for a while, just being like, how is it that I'm not exercising at all, but a five minute walk makes me feel completely drained. Mm -hmm. So you know, I, I had to just continue to go back to videos and, and book, the books and stuff to just remind myself of, oh, yeah, like it's because my body's saying, no, 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 I'm not ready for you to be active. Stay in the cave, you know, yeah. recover. <laughs> um, I really found that that helped a lot to think of it more like in primal times. Yeah. Because I think the more you remove the like societal aspect, and you think of it like if all we had was just the hunter-gatherer times, if you were sick or exhausted, you'd be useless to the rest of the, the, you know, the tribe. So they'd want you to go back and rest until you could come back out and help everyone, you yeah. know? Yeah, that's a, that's a great way to look at it. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> it, I don't know. I just feel like that simplified it a lot. So, yeah, just progressively I did less and less. And when I really got down to uh, earlier this year, so 2000, early 2019, and just very minimal, like I would only walk if I actually had energy to, but mm -hmm. if I didn't, I was like, nope, I'm not even going to let myself do it. Yeah. That's when the rest of recovery really started to come together, like mm -hmm. just noticing the weight starting to extremely gradually, but still coming off, clothes were fitting looser. Still had no idea how much I weighed, but I could tell. Yeah. And then I finally took a side. I had a, pro a picture from last year and then a picture from this year. And mm -hmm. that's when I really saw the progress. You mm -hmm. know, just being like removing the exercise component was the, the last piece of the puzzle. And so for anybody listening right now, if that's where you are at the moment, take the exercise out. You're going to recover 10 times faster, I promise. Yes. Okay. Thank you, because yeah. that's like, it's the hardest thing for people, you know, yeah. and that was the same, again, here's the parallels, it, that was the hardest part for me to let go, okay. Okay. and it took the longest to get rid of, but just for that time, and once I did, that's just like you, that's when I started to see, you know, the body, being, it was receptive to that, you know, it's and amazing. it was just like, this is what I need, oh, yes. I can rest, I feel safe, yes. you know. Well, and that's, you know, and I had brought it up to you through email, but I'm going to bring it up now. Anytime as of now that I try to, not necessarily like try, but if I do more exercise than my body wants to on a given week, water retention, like immediately. Mm -hmm. Within a couple of days, my like abdomen is swollen, not like severely, but I can tell, right? Um, same thing if I, like let's say get really busy on a certain day and I just not not intentionally but I just like didn't eat as much as I usually do for a couple days same thing I'll notice immediate um, my body is very very resistant to anything that feels like low calories anything that starts to feel like too much exercise I'm just too sensitive to all yeah. that now yeah and that's what happens that's the same with me and I've talked to I don't know if you remember Alicia she was on my channel before same thing with her uh -huh. yeah can't do that anymore and then right after you sent me that email someone else sent me an email that asked the same question pretty much really? yeah and it's just like wow. your body becomes very like protective or you know careful if yes. anything seems like restriction or energy deficit again it's just going to be like nope nope this this seems way too familiar the familiar misery like nope yeah you know and yeah and it's almost like it's like the opposite 
problem now you got to make sure you're high calorie all the time yeah, <laughs> so you have to. The problem but <laughs> exactly but if you have those busy days you have to make sure because your body's not going to deal with it it's like nope definitely not and, you know you think back to like those rules that they used to have about uh you can't eat past a certain time and make sure your dinners are like small or whatever oh, yeah. if you had a day like that you're now going to probably have to have a much bigger dinner because it's just na it's it's mother nature balancing things back out you know? oh, yeah. Yeah. i don't even worry about that i don't worry about what time i eat anymore i don't worry if it's late at night i'm just like whatever you know? yeah exactly as it should be you know yeah. I, I heard this once i can't remember where but there's a light in the fridge for a reason you know you don't need that light for during the day there's a light for the night time you Ooh. know <laughs> so wow. but it's just so true because i i don't know like i i eat still pretty consistently like even before bed i'll make sure like i have a piece of toast and butter or more you know and yeah. you know it's just I, yeah, I don't think about the times either because that's irrelevant, you know? Yeah, it really is. So. Yeah. Well, you almost, like, I think you had said this before, you almost have to make sure you eat enough before bed because then you start having sleeping problems. It's, yeah. it's very easy at this point for the body to want to go back into recovery if it feels like you're going back the other way. So. Oh, yeah. Motivation to not do that anymore. <laughs> and even if it's unintentional, too, like, okay. you know, so, you know, you don't want to, for people to not take it like to the extreme of perfection. Yeah. Like, you know, I can't, you know, if I do this, then I'm going to mess everything up, you know, but just to be mindful of it, because even unintentional restriction, falling into an unintentional energy deficit for too long, like your body's just going to, it's going to trigger a lot in your body and it's going to start holding on to more and it's going to start going back in the recovery and it's going to prolong everything Yep, you know, like exactly. that too many times so <laughs> yep couldn't have said that better <laughs> so was there anything else that was really important in your recovery that helped you a lot just I don't know just anything that really helped you in your recovery that you can think of that I didn't ask about gotcha I think the mindset is the most important thing to work on. I mean, you can do all the physical things. You can be eating enough. You can be taking the exercise out. But ultimately, if you're feeling guilty the whole time and hating yourself, recovery is not going to work. Mm -hmm. So that's why I say whatever that means for someone, whether they need to get more involved in their spirituality or they need to go hire a therapist. I even worked with a more unconventional therapist, and that was immensely helpful. I don't know if you've ever heard of EFT. It's like yeah. the tapping stuff. Yeah. It kind of, um, it brings trauma to the surface and then because we get trauma trapped in our bodies, mm -hmm. it, it's hard to explain, but it literally gets that trauma out of there. Yeah. Um, so that helped me a ton and just really working on affirmations and self-love journaling and starting to I think as a result of that, that helped me to start setting better boundaries with people so that I could get more negative people out of my life so that then I was only surrounded by more positive people who were really supportive of the whole process. So that's why I think probably the most important aspect is the mindset because you could be eating 3,000 calories a day. You could be very intuitively exercising. But if the whole time you're just like, I hate myself, I'm disgusting, like you're not really going to be recovered, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So that's why I say it almost kind of like if you combine them all in a way, whatever spirituality means to you, you know, whether that's God or, or law of attraction or whatever, mm -hmm. um, and then taking that upon yourself with like self-love journaling and then self-care time. So um, going to get a massage or like taking a day off to do nothing and, and trying not to make yourself feel guilty about it. Um, so that is what I think ultimately saved me. That's awesome. I couldn't agree more. I mean, it, recovery is so much more than the food and, you know, all of the kind of, not surface level, but in a sense, I mean, the physical part of recovery is one aspect, but the mental part and the emotional part of recovery is huge. And that's what's going to make your recovery sustainable for the long term you know you could physically recover 
But if you never challenge your mental and emotional and do that deeper work, and get in touch with your spirituality and seeing that you're a spirit, not just a body. Right. And it's, it's so huge. And that's a huge part of recovery, you know? So it, yeah. yeah, I totally yeah. agree. And then it's going to feel corny and cheesy for a while, but it's like anything else, you know, whatever you've taught yourself to do now took time and you trained your subconscious to do it over time. So when you do that stuff, it feels weird in the beginning, but now it's so common sense to me to where if I'm having a bad day or, you know, bad self image day or whatever, relatively quickly, that's like the first thing that comes out on my, Oh, I need to do affirmations. I need to like start pointing out what I love about myself. Yeah. You know, maybe I need some self care time. That's awesome. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Time. Yeah. That's so important, you know, and yeah, being patient, with the process yes. being patient yes. with yourself patient right. with your body because like you said it took time to get to this place that pushed you into recovery so it's going to take time to recover yes. well and i think people that develop eating disorders already aren't the most patient people yeah. so this whole thing is a lesson in patience and like self-compassion so really how did you okay last question and then oh yeah <laughs> How did you like, I don't know, develop that patience? Because seriously, again, like that's another really challenging thing for people is the patience because we're like instant gratification, quick fix, pills, steroids, you know, that kind of stuff. So how did you do that? I think I mean patience is still something I work on. Yeah. I, you know, I to, okay. I have to monitor that type A part of me all yeah. the time. So um, honestly, for that aspect of it, that therapist, like, I can't rave about him enough. Mm -hmm. um, that, I don't know, it's, you know, especially having been, to be honest, kind of skeptical in the beginning. Yeah. I was like, how is just me doing some of, how's that gonna, but, you know, there's more to it than that, and it's very Eastern medicine. Yeah. Um, it, it somehow just got some of that trauma out of me, you know, whether it was from childhood or whatever believing that I wasn't enough if I didn't do X, Y, Z right now. And then uh, he talks about um, this Eastern concept that they just call Kaizen, but mm -hmm. essentially it just, as simple as it's going to sound, one step at a time. But so they go into detail to talk about like how companies have that, have, that started really small, like I think it was Johnson & Johnson that created Band-Aids, it was just like some guy who his wife got a cut from a kitchen knife and he just went and developed this little band-aid. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he, he, he um, made one out of stuff he had in the house. And so just that one little step, you know, created the next one and then eventually had this huge business. But I guess what I'm saying is trying to look at things like I don't have to do it all right now. Mm -hmm. Like I can just do 1% of it and that's enough. And it's a practice, I guess, is what I'll say. Because especially if you are a type A person, that sounds like, yeah, yeah, but mm. I'm not going to get it done that way. But I think the more you look at it, like, you actually hold yourself back by trying to, like, do everything right now, and it has to be 100% perfect. If you're going to exhaust yourself, it's going to come out wrong at some point. So when I tried to look at it, like, I need to take this, like, step by step and, like, be compassionate toward myself if I'm tired, if I don't sleep that day, um, if I need a, a you know a break from from talking to my friends or whatever that day. That that's not a bad thing. Yeah. I think the other lesson of eating disorder recovery is for people who have um, kind of been like people who take care of everybody else all their lives, and for me it was kind of like a manifestation of of. Um, a way to take care of myself without feeling guilty about it yeah. and uh, when I realized that I was like oh I don't need the eating disorder I need to actually take care of me mm -hmm. you know yeah yeah and the eating disorder and you know the dieting and being at a certain BMI is not taking care of yourself <laughs> right exactly so I won't say that I've mastered patience but just that it's a <laughs> that it's a process yeah and yeah we're humans you know and we'll never never be perfect recovery doesn't promise yeah. perfection but it just gives you the nourishment and the healing so that you can take on 
life and everything that life has to offer, you know? So. I mean, show me an honestly perfect person and I'll, you know, and yeah. even when you get to know, like, you know how they always say, like, you shouldn't meet your heroes, but um, yeah. when you meet people that you think are perfect, when you get to know them, you start to learn that they have insecurities and flaws too. So yeah. there's literally not one. So I guess my point is it's unattainable. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And that's why we can get in the habit of putting people on a pedestal. Like we look at them on their Instagram or on their YouTube or in their career and you know our neighbor or whatever, and we put them on a pedestal and it's just like, you look into their life and everyone has their problems. Everyone has their things that something that they're going through you know, or working on, hopefully. Some people don't have that, that they're not working on anything or they don't feel like they need to work on anything. But the right. thing is, is that we'll always be working on something. Yeah. Whether you're yeah. aware of it or not, you know? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So again, just thank you so much for all the content that you put out that helped me so much during my own recovery. It's like I said to you before, it's just having a real, honest, genuine person talking about your story and being able to give perspective from your own experience. Just, I know I'm not the only person that that's helped. Well, thank you so much. It, You're welcome. It means the world. Like I told you, you know, it just makes it all worth it. That's why, you know, we're trying to spread this message is because we were in misery and then we found like true freedom. And so it's like, you want to help everyone else that are, oh my gosh. That, you know, so, if only everyone was open to it. It's like, it, here's the magical answer, you know? No, no, it can't be that simple. It has to be this diet, you know? It has to be the supplement, you know? So, exactly. Exactly. yeah. So I just appreciate you now, you know? You did the work. You went through the process, and now, you know, you're on the other side, and now you're able to share your story. And thank you so much for coming on the channel to share. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, I'm honored. Yeah, yeah. of so, course. Thank you, and you're always such a light. I was so excited to reconnect with you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You're so sweet. <laughs> so now you have done with dieting. So yes. where? Can, so how do people find that? And how do people? Um, so you, you can find me on Instagram at Jesse Riemann, and I can put the spelling down. I also have at Done with Dieting LLC on Instagram. Um, I'm in the process of a website, and I'm going to be revamping my old YouTube channel because the content I have on it was when I was in recovery. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to have that kind of side by side. So yeah, awesome. So you shared some of your process in recovery. Oh, awesome. See that kind of stuff is, is great to see. I think it was hard. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it's, that's why I did it. I wanted to have that. I mean, at least some of the process documented to go, Oh, wow, look at how my mindset kind of shifted as I started talking, you know. Yeah. You can see some of the kind of still diet mindsets in there. And then as it as now it's changed, will be interesting to be like, yeah, that was, <laughs> yeah, that was crap. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Well, that's awesome that you have that so people can see the, the story and the progress, and, you know, because that's so helpful to just see the vulnerability and the realness, you know, so go, go check out Jesse's. Um, Thank you. <laughs> so anything else that you want to leave everyone with before we get off here? Any? Nope. I think, I think we covered quite a bit, so I'm sure we could talk for two hours. Know, we could have another like part two to this. Right. right. Trauma and emotional stuff, but definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So thank you so much for having me on here.